Welcome to the program, your host Ron Whitlock, our guest in the studio, defending the Democrat Party going into the presidential election cycle here in the Lone Star State of Texas on March 4th, Aaron Pena, 2000 Democratic Party Platform Committeeman on the Otro Lado, the Republican side, Hollis Rutledge, president of the Republican Party County Chair Association of the Lone Star State of Texas. You guys ready to defend your party? and? Tell us exactly what you're going to tell your standard bearer when it comes to the convention time. And both of you gentlemen are going to the Republican, in your case, Hollis, the Democrat convention, in your case, Aaron. Right. And you're going to tell us exactly what you think your standard bearers need to be talking about when it comes to the Lone Star State of Texas. Because it appears this year, March 4th, if you live on a line from San Antonio to Houston, south to Laredo and Brownsville, in that particular four-legged quadrant of South Texas, you might be in the catbird seat because there may be some presidential candidates coming to see you asking for your vote this year. Right, guys? That's right. That's right. Unbelievable. Absolutely. We've said it on a recent program. You want to go back to ronwhitlock.com. You can watch that program where both these gentlemen kind of prognosticated that Texas is going to be in the play come March the 4th, and we're here to continue that topic on this program. Because it's Clinton-Obama, it appears on the Democrat side, on the Republican side, McCain, Romney, and Huckabee. First of all, you're the South Texas committee man for Hillary Clinton. Tell us about your number one candidate now. Well, I believe Hillary Clinton will be the candidate for the Democratic Party. Super Tuesday will bear that out. Uh, I think uh, Obama is a strong candidate, but uh, because of the institutional strength of, of the Clinton organization, because of the way Super Tuesday is made up, I believe that you'll see her in Denver. Um, still, you still feel like it's going to be a brokered convention, Obama will still be there when you get to your convention? Well, because Democrats, unlike Republicans, have proportional uh, delegates coming out of the different states, for Republicans it's winner take all, for Democrats we are a bit more democratic <laughs> and we we allow proportional so sure. proportional del you have your time proportional <laughs> delegates to come out so obama if he gets 40% of uh, california he'll have 40% of the votes although california is a bit unique they do their delegate selection i believe by uh, congressional districts or some some smaller unit than some of the other states um, the bottom line is i believe hillary clinton's going to be there obama will still be a force Edwards and the, and the supporters of Edwards, where they fall out between the two camps is going to matter. But in the end, it's going to be a race, I believe, between Hillary Clinton and John McCain, and it's going to be a good fight. John McCain has, uh, being from a border state, is a bit more uh, palatable to uh, citizens living along the border. He's not so tough on immigration. That gave him heartburn in the Republican Party. but. He may be the standard bearer, as Republicans will have to accept him. Uh, he does have some Hispanic vote appeal. Oh, in Florida, if it wasn't sure for enough. the Cuban Americans, he would not have won. Romney got the the Anglo vote, and without the Hispanics there, Mel he Martinez. would not have won. Mel Martinez, Mel Martinez in particular. And so, uh, when it comes to California, when it comes to the other states on Super Tuesday, Hispanics are going to play a big role, and his. Mm, a more uh, tolerant views on immigration and various other issues that matter to, to the border community will make him a very tough candidate, but I still believe Hillary Clinton is the candidate to beat. Your Vice President, you think Lynn up on the ticket would be Bill Richardson, John uh, that, Edwards? That's uh, an interesting uh, choice. Um, tip historically speaking, what happens is you try to get a, a geographical match. If you have a a progressive, you try to bring in a conservative. If you if you have somebody from the north, you bring in somebody from the south. Edwards would be a good choice, being a southerner. Richardson, uh, Richardson would be good would because be a good he's choice. the first Hispanic on a national That's ticket. That's right, and the west is, is increasingly in play. He is a governor. Hillary does have experience from having lived in the White House for eight years. You can't discount that. Bill Richardson is a governor. That is administrative experience, which the people of the United States like to see on tickets. Oh, yes, without a doubt. Um, 
as I said, it, it used to be said that uh, the West was Republican territory. That is changing. Uh, if you look at the various states from California, which used to be bedrock Republican, it is now solidly Democrat. You go up and down the coast, you go to Nevada, you go to the various different states, Colorado, they're all in play now. And so Richardson would be a good choice. Hollis, your three candidates, McCain, Romney, Huckabee, give us your breakdown of how you think they're going to be as it relates to the issues for South Texas and the border region. Well, no question. I think McCain uh, has captured uh, 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 quite a bit of momentum amongst the rank and file of the Republican uh, 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 hierarchy as well as the rank and file uh, throughout the, his campaign. Um, I think that uh, it's going to be a, a big plus for him as he goes into Super Tuesday, especially uh, his performance in Florida uh, with the Hispanic community. Uh, certainly Mel Martinez, uh, senator, uh, federal senator there, U.S. senator, played a very important role in, in not only endorsing but campaigning for, for McCain in that primary in Florida, as well as uh, the most one of the most popular governors that Florida has ever had. Christie has certainly also played a very uh, important role in, in, in securing uh, uh, the, uh, the win for, for McCain. I think that um, uh, two, two Super Tuesdays, obviously the, the more, more important uh, date here that we all should look at uh, in terms of who's going to be able to survive uh, and, and go on to the convention. Uh, Huckabee, of course, is going to still be in play. I think that, he, you know, he, his, uh, his, his, this is his backyard, uh, the Bible Belt. And uh, so it's going to be interesting how he, he's able to perform on Super Tuesday. I think Romney uh, will still probably be in play. For how long? I don't know. Uh, because Self-funded. He can stay in as long as he wants to. deep pockets, and, and he does have a, a, a good following. So... Uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, Super Tuesday. Now, Hollis, when you go to your GOP convention in Minneapolis, who do you think is going to end up the VP, Nod, Giuliani, Huckabee? Who do you think? I don't know, uh, to be quite frank. Uh, uh, but as, as Aaron uh, uh, was able to explain, which is true, uh, you know, usually you try to look at uh, geographical areas uh, to, and also to bring in a, a team uh, player uh, that brings uh, something to the table in terms of a, a strength uh, to solidify a certain region, uh, a certain uh, population group. Uh, but certainly any one of those two probably would be a, uh, a good selection. Uh, but uh, I don't think... McCain it, beholden to I don't th Giuliani? I, I don't think... Uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he may not choose any of uh, the two remaining presidential candidates because that's happened before. And uh, he, may, he may look uh, elsewhere for a, a VP. But undoubtedly this time, fellas, it looks like the first time in 48 years that we've had a U.S. senator at the top of both tickets. Because normally we elect governors. Carter, we elect governors. Reagan, we elect governors. Clinton, we elect governors. Bush to become our president of the United States. We elect vice presidents. Bush, we elect vice presidents. Nixon, we do not elect senators to become our president of the United States. Historically, our people see this as a going up the ladder. You've been an administrator of a state. You've been a part of the executive team of another president. You've been a vice president. Therefore, you should elevate yourself to become president of the United States because of your experience quotient. So this is going to be a unique time, undoubtedly, because we've not had a senator voted uh, at the top of the ticket, elected especially since Kennedy back in, back in the 60s. Well, we got we to gotta understand that for the first time, in about four to five decades, we will, we will not see a coronation in play, neither from the Democratic Party uh, at the convention nor the Republican Party. Uh, we're, uh, we're obviously uh, in, a, in a very volatile uh, political uh, situation both in both primaries. So uh, in this particular presidential election year, uh, it's extremely very unique, and, and we, we haven't experienced this in, in a long time. So consequently, I think that the, 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 con the national convention uh, from both parties uh, are actually finally going to be uh, looked upon as a, a, as a mechanism that, that has been there for a long time 
and uh, it's going to be a very interesting process of how uh, of how we're going to be able to select both nominees because we we don't have we won't have a, a coronation by any stretch of the imagination. You gentlemen, what are you going to tell your platform committee people, your meetings, your standard bearer for both parties, what they need to be considering as it relates to immigration reform, guest worker, and the border wall here in your region? Well, let me say, uh, if I may, that uh, no question from my perspective, uh, being from the border, living here uh, all my life, uh, that McCain uh, certainly is, is, is a, a candidate that uh, we, I personally look forward to, to, to looking at because he has embraced uh, a lot of the immigration ideas that President Bush presently has attempted to pass through Congress uh, but has failed. Uh, one of those, of course, is the, the important component here, and that is the guest worker program. Uh, I think it's going to be essential and important if we're, as a country, to be able to have a complete, concise, uh, and effective uh, immigration reform uh, uh, program that we have to have that component in place. Uh, yes, we have to protect our, our borders, no question about it. But we have to be more effective, more efficient, uh, more smarter in how we're going to be able to do that. I think the virtual wall is extremely important. Maybe in isolated cases, such as in New Mexico and Arizona in the, in the desert area, maybe a wall would be, would, would be appropriate. I don't think definitely that would be the case in Texas. We have a natural barrier there with the Rio Grande River. I think uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of technology that can be utilized. And I think uh, McCain uh, certainly is in line with that thought. And uh, uh, the other, of course, is uh, the whole idea of the, the economy. I mean, we all know, from my perspective, that uh, NAFTA has played a, an important role in our eco economy, not only here locally, but regionally, but nationwide, all the way through uh, Canada, all of North America and into Central America. CAFTA, which just came into play last, uh, last year, which was an important piece of legislation uh, that now uh, uh, in, involves uh, Central America. All of that, uh, I think, is, is, is in play here to be able to, to compete uh, with a global economy that we, we are developing and to be able to compete with Europe and Asia and the Asian markets. So it's going to be very important that we have a candidate uh, uh, that understands uh, the, the issue of, of how this area uh, is important to the overall economy of the United States. And uh, so consequently, they, I would hope that uh, uh, as, as the primary approaches that we can get some of our, our uh, principal uh, uh, operatives uh, uh, that, that are going to be in the campaign, including our our, our, our candidates to come to the valley, to come to our region, so they can understand exactly what we're all about and how important we are to the overall national economy. Do you think that you might be able to convince your party at the convention to understand that if they did have a guest worker program for the workers coming to our country, just like the President discussed in his State of the Union address, if those people are coming legally, then that 95% of those dollars now going into enforcement could be used to focus on the real bad guys as opposed to focus on people coming to take jobs that our people are not Absolutely, and that, and, that, and that was obviously well said by the president. You know, we want to be able to focus on the real criminals, uh, and this is one way uh, in which to, to, to do so, so that we can be able to maximize the utilization of our human resources, our, our, our people out in the field, to be able to focus on the drug cartel, to be able to focus on the on the real criminals that, that are that are wanting to penetrate our country. And you're going to tell your fellow Republicans when you get to the convention in Minneapolis. Absolutely. Aaron Panian, same question. Where do you think your party at the platform, if you're back on that committee as you were in 2000, and your standard bearer needs to stand on immigration reform, the guest worker bill, and the building of the border wall along the Rio Grande River? Well, it's not hard to do better than what we've been doing for the past couple <laughs> of years under this administration. We gave the Republicans a chance to run our government, and it's not been run very well by most American standards. That's why this country is looking for a change candidate. That's why the Republican Party is having to go with a candidate that, that most of the regulars 
don't like but they're going to have to put up with because the country is in the mood for change. The first thing we have to do is find solutions to problems rather than having gridlock, rather than pushing problems down to the state. We're now as a state representative and, and as a state legislature, we are having to deal with immigration and border security. That is a federal problem, but we've had to deal with it because this administration has failed, quite frankly, in their job in finding solutions. We've had demagoguery, and we, we've had polarization when we need to have solutions. We need to have comprehensive uh, immigration reform. Everybody demands it. I think most Republicans on the border agree that we need to have border security as Democrats do. But we also need to find solutions to our immigration problem without hurting business and without uh, and having a, a human sensitivity to the problem. Uh, Hillary Clinton would take a big step in simply coming to Texas, paying attention to our issues. For the longest period of time, we down here on the border, Republicans and Democrats, have complained to Washington and we get nothing but lip service. And we, uh, our, our last session was spent in large part having to take care of the problems of the federal government. So we would like attention from our government. Texas needs to be paid attention to. It's strange that we had a, a, a president from Texas. So many leaders in the administration and yet Texas was neglected. We need to have a president who pays attention. Hillary Clinton for the longest period of time, both herself and her husband, have paid attention to South Texas. They have deep connections here in South Texas. I believe they'll pay attention to the problem. Immigration is obviously one of the biggest problems that we have because we don't have a solution. And if Washington does, doesn't take care of the problem, we have to pay for it. And so we, we spent a hundred plus million dollars on border security last time when the federal government, quite frankly, should have been doing that problem. So simply finding solutions and getting uh, to finding those solutions and, and reaching across the table and trying to, to find them rather than polarizing the country. Obviously, my good friend here uh, you know, has, has some good thoughts and some, some good ideas. <laughs> the, the, the problem here is that Hillary's been here, absolutely, I agree, uh, a, a, lo a lot of times. And, and, they got and, money, and they never picked to up talk to the public, and, and, never ha to talk and to has the been here uh, on numerous occasions to, to, to uh, a well-funded uh, 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 party uh, operatives that, that have been able to contribute to her campaigns over the years. Problem is, that hasn't made any difference to her because unlike, uh, unlike other, uh, other uh, Democrats who feel like like we do and like Aaron does in terms of how we should approach the the whole border issue uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton voted to build a wall uh, between Mexico and the United States so all of that money that that has gone to her coffers all of that time that she spent here obviously had made has not made a difference now your two senators Cornyn and Hutchins and, voted to build the wall and that is correct but what I'm trying to say is that in the in, in this particular case Hillary has been here several times and she still voted for the wall. I but think what we need to do here is probably have somebody such as McCain in this particular case who really understands border issues because he is a, a border uh, senator. Uh, he probably would be uh, in a position to better understand uh, exactly how we live down here and how uh, important Mexico is to us in our economy. Now, we just shared this with the audience on your screen, emerging distribution centers with the ports of Manzanillo and Lazaro Cárdenas opening all these products which have been going to the East Coast, West Coast rather, now going to be coming through South Texas, land ports, rail ports, Brownsville all the way to Laredo, then distributing all across the United States. This is a very important key element in maintaining the stability of the national economy, plus these workers, bilingual, bicultural, being developed, trained, educated in greater South Texas, also serving the needs economically of the nation. Important? Absolutely. And as I mentioned earlier in this program, uh, uh, we've become a, a very important and integral part of uh, the economy in this country. And it's going to be e in extremely important for any presidential ca candidate, Democrat or Republican, to really understand uh, what has developed down here as a result of NAFTA and as a result of CAFTA. Uh, we are the front door 
uh, to be able to compete with the European markets and the Asian markets. And it's important that we, we have uh, someone that can be able to not only understand, understand how important we are to the overall economy in this country, but that can be able to go forward and implement and strengthen uh, that initiative that was started by a George Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush, some years ago. Pitching for the vote for their party on March 4th, when you go into the ballot box, Hollis Rutledge for the Republican Party of Texas. Yes, we, we really need to make sure that we have as many uh, people participate in, in this process. And quite frankly, as I mentioned in the last program, uh, you know, it, it was it was important that we we stick to the to the date of March fourth, and as you and I agreed the, at the last program, Aaron, uh, it it looks like uh, we are going to be a very important part of who the next nominee is, simply because we stayed with the March fourth primary date. Looks like that presidential candidates, for both parties, may be coming to South Texas because the economy is the number one issue. South Texas is very important to the economy of the state and nation. We're the future of the nation, quite frankly. And uh, if you're tired of the way this country has been run, if you're tired of the, the standing that our country now has a, a across the planet, if you remember the way things were under the Clinton administration, under the Kennedy administration, under the Johnson administration, we can return to that. The real change candidate here is the Democratic candidate. Thank you for joining us, Hollis and Aaron, and you, our viewer. Till next time, adios.